With us now is Congressman Jared Moskowitz, a Democrat from Florida who is on the House Oversight and Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. So this idea of tying aid to Israel to cuts in funding for the IRS, uh, your, your Florida um, congressional colleague, Debbie Washerman Schultz, said this is playing political games with the Israel emergency funding. You've said it's akin to a, having a political mailer, yet you also say you would vote for this. Why? Well, first of all, they're setting a political trap. It's out completely outrageous. It's not serious policy. And don't listen to me. Go listen to the National Republican uh, Congressional Committee. They put out a tweet saying Democrats are going to have to choose between Israel and the IRS. So they're admitting that this is a campaign ploy so they can send mailers out for the Democrats that decide not to defund uh, the IRS. This is what we're doing with our national security. This is what Republicans are going to do while there are American hostages. They're going to politicize funding for Israel in their greatest time of need in 50 years. And so that's why we're calling it out. That being said, listen, I'm not going to fall for the trap. Uh, I am going to support Israel's funding because it's super critical uh, in the world we live in today uh, that, we, that is, we give Israel uh, the support that they need. Why isn't that falling for the trap, though? It's not falling for the trap because they want us to vote no, John. They want us to vote no. That's the trap. They want us to choose the domestic spending over the foreign spending, the domestic cuts over the foreign spending. That's what they want. They want us to fall right into it. And that's why I'm saying I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. By the way, this violates their single subject spending rule. They said they weren't going to miss, uh, mix several subjects in a bill. This also is, is going to add to the deficit, which is something they're not supposed to be doing. So they're violating every rule that they've set for themselves, mm -hmm. all in the nature of politics, not about bringing Americans home, not about helping our ally in the Middle East, not about doing any humanitarian aid, by the way, for the folks that are in the Gaza Strip. There's none of that. That's what they're doing. Uh, but I'm not going to fall into that trap that they're trying to set for Democrats. Congressman, your synagogue uh, in Parkland, Florida, we might add, over the weekend there was an anti-Semitic incident outside. And if I'm getting this right, it was what appeared to be kids on bikes riding by yelling things about Jews. What's that feel like for you to have that happen outside your synagogue? Well, I mean, John, we've, we've seen this now, unfortunately, all over the country, in universities and in the streets on social media. I mean, it, it's the cool and hip thing. I have no doubt that these kids saw this on TikTok or Instagram or somewhere and thought, oh, this would be cool. Let's put on ski masks and go to our local temple and yell, kill the Jews. We have seen in this country, also on college campuses and in the streets, this go from complaints about Israel to Jews. You know, we, we're, as the Jewish community is constantly told, you can be anti-Israel but not anti-Semitic. And I would surmise that you could, but what we're seeing in the street is not. What we're seeing in the street is calls to gas the Jews, kill the Jews, cleanse the Jews from the river to the sea, right? Kill everyone in between. Um, it, it, it is concerning. This is what my grandmother, who was a Holocaust survivor, uh, you, know, you know, as a child, you know, told me stories. You go to the museums, you, you think to yourself, there's no way that this could happen again. How could people be so bl blindly hate uh, a, a religion and people that they don't, they don't even know? And then you see this and you realize that what happens is, is that when there's so much propaganda out there and it's fed to people by the algorithms all day long on social media, uh, you can see why this is fomenting yeah. all around the world again, John. So it's, it's, it's really scary. Yeah, look, the old saying, it can't happen here, clearly does not apply. But you get to what I think is a key area of discussion that needs to be discussed, which is the line between being critical of Israel and anti-Semitism. And I bring that up because Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, there's going to be a censure motion on the House floor this week on her. And you said that everyone should consider that strongly. So why, where do you draw that line between free speech and being critical of Israel and anti-Semitism? Well, again, I, I think you can be critical of Israel's policies, but when people are, start using the word Jew, clearly that's no longer about foreign policy. And we've seen it, the word Israel disappear and the word Jew replace it 
all over college campuses and universities and in big cities across the country and online, John. It is pervasive online. So that's where you draw the line. That's clearly now not about Israel. That's clearly about anti-Semitism. You know, as far as it is uh, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, that's about the fact that she still went out and told a lie after U.S. intelligence uh, said that it had nothing to do about Israel at the hospital. First of all, let's go through that. The hospital wasn't hit. It was the parking lot. There weren't 500 people that were killed because Hamas makes up the numbers. And by the way, it wasn't Israel, the biggest part. It was not Israel. Every intelligence agency we have in this country has confirmed that. There were riots all over the place. The president got, had his meetings canceled uh, uh, with foreign leaders. Uh, we, see, we see mobs in Russia looking for Jews on the plane from Tel Aviv. All of this goes back to people believing that that hospital was bombed. And so spreading dangerous misinformation uh, is something people in Congress shouldn't do. When Republicans do that, Democrats call that out, okay? And we censure them for when they do that or say they should be censured. Uh, and so, you know, that's why I, I said it was something that I think uh, it should be, should be considered. Congressman Jared Moskowitz, we do appreciate your time. Please come back and see us again. Thanks, John.